Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the cabin at Frog Hollow. We're tying the, uh, the buzzsaw fly. Um, now you can see I have it in the vise. The buzzsaw, known by a couple other names, uh, the Osabo buzzsaw or the Madsen buzzsaw, but all is relative, it's a buzzsaw. Uh, very unique fly. I would have to say, uh, you know, this fly came 25 years before I was born. So it's an oldie but a goodie. Um, as you can see, one hook upside down, the trailer hook is upside down, the, the uh, forward hook is right side up for a, a lack of a better term. And they are connected by mono, which makes it a legal fly, even in fly water. So this is a, a, a unique fly, the buzzsaw. Let's get going. So we're going to clamp a streamer hook, 2x strong, 3 or 4x long in the, in the hook, or in the vise, excuse me. Get it in there, level. And uh, we're going to dress this back hook with thread. Back to the bend. Oop, got a little tag sticking up there. We don't want that. And now the unique part of this fly is we're going to uh, con put a connector here. This is 20 pound uh, monofilament. We're going to come through the eye of the fly and extend it down the, the length of the hook shaft. And we're going to lash it down. Now, some folks will take a pair of pliers and mash that monofilament to give a little better bite. Uh, the original recipe, like I said, it was 25 years before I was born. Uh, we're not sure. Uh, but uh, talking with Jerry Reagan, who is kind of a expert on some of these things. It was just as you see right here and then glued. So <clears throat> we're going to we're going to put a little super glue on that. Jerry said he was tying this fly once and somebody was thinking, well, that's going to pull out of there and you'll lose a fish and Jerry clamp, clamped it in his vise on the table and Asked the gentleman to pull on the forward fly as hard as he could. He about tipped the table over. So I don't think it's coming out of there. So anyway, we're going to start this fly now. Uh, we've got our mono tied in. We're going to clip that off so it's kind of out of our way because that's just going to be a connector on the front hook. So we don't need much of it. So the tail is uh, a tag of red yarn which we're going to tie in right there, about, about like so. Two or three firm wraps right there. And then we're going to lash that yarn down. We're going to take it all the way to the forward part of the hook. Get some of those hairs out of the way there so we can make a nice neat head when it comes that time return to the scene of the crime or the tie-in point. Let me clip that tail off so that's looks about right. I like that. Next we're going to tie in our ribbing. This is medium tinsel. Uh, we happen to be using mylar. Gold one side, silver the other. This is a silver rib. So we're going to tie that in with the with the gold facing us, so as we turn it over, we're going to see the silver side. Next, uh, the recipe calls for red floss. So this is four-strand uh, tying floss. We're you know we'll pull off three or four inches of it. Snip that out. 
We absolutely don't want any tie-in bumps with floss, so we're going to run that up the full length of the hook shank. Lashing that down as we go. I'm going to put a little bit of good old-fashioned spit on there to keep that floss together. Before we get there, I'm going to snip the end off. So we end at the proper spot. Lash that down good. And here we go with the floss. So first one is the most critical. Again, just make sure that you cover all of your startup threads and that we make sure we have a nice startup on this. Nice, even, concentric wraps as we go. A lot of flies back in the day, dry flies particularly, were tied with floss, some of them with yarn. Very few were dubbed. And I don't know, I mean, you know, I started tying when I was 11, which would have made, that would have been uh, 1961. I didn't know what dubbing was, but that, you know, I was also from the sticks of Onaway, so that might have had something to do with that. Uh, now we're going to uh, Palmer wrap, spiral these up the body, make them nice and neat same distance between the two so you look like you know what you're doing. Don't, don't have one eighth of an inch apart and the other one three sixteenths. That just wouldn't do. So we're going to end our ball game right there. Tie that off. Don't worry about, uh, you know, the, the head too much on this because you know, it's going to be tucked up underneath the other fly, but, you know, just make it nice and neat. I'm going to snip our tinsel out. Come back around. Finish up this head. And we're going to use our, this is a long reach whip finisher. There's, they make two of these, a standard and then this long reach. But a long reach, you know, you can get a lot around a lot of stuff. For example, that piece of monofilament. So, here we go. Maybe. Two. See, we can reach right around that mono. Three, we're going to do one more. Four. Snip. So, that's the, uh, that's part of the fly. That's the back half. So, now... We'll clamp another streamer hook in. I'd like to say this was the forerunner of the uh, of the rattlesnake, but I didn't even know about the buzz saw when I did the rattlesnake. That that came later in my fly tying education, if there is such a thing. We're going to dress this hook and. We're going to lash this, this upside down, if you will. I'm going to make a couple loose wraps here, and we'll get the, the proper attitude on this. This hook basically goes just up on the bend of the hook a little bit, so as we're tying materials on it, ends up, you know, looking like that. Uh, the first one I tied and I put up on the Internet, uh, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Boy, I got a note almost immediately to say, yeah, the, the back hook's too far back. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, it was. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's the fun part that we're having with this series is that, you know, this is, people can comment and, and give us an, uh, some input on things that they know because... As we all know, everybody, not every person, 
knows everything. Now I'm going to take a couple wraps just underneath that mono, as you see. I want to lift that hook up so it it stays absolutely level with the other hook. And you can do that. If it's drooping a little bit, pick it up, couple under wraps, you're good to go. So we're, we're going to be safe, not sorry. More super glue. Doesn't take much. A couple taps of the fingers. Just don't stick this finger to that finger that we did before. And now we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the last one, a little bit of tinsel, gold side facing U, floss, Let me tuck that so that's out of the way. I should have a material clip on here, but I don't. Four-stranded floss. Wrap right up to where we're going to tie in the wing or the pieces of bucktail. Don't attempt to cut the hook shank with your fine point scissors. It just doesn't work well. That was a joke. Okay, here we go with the floss. Begin that. Travel forward. Nice and smooth body. We get all of that because all of our materials follow the hook shank. We've got no humpty bumps where we started or stopped. Did we get it all covered? Yes, we did. Spiral wrap the Tinsel. It was called ribbing. Try and make them the same as the last one, of course. Kind of a barber pole effect. We've lashed down the tinsel. We'll snip that out. All right. Now I'm just going to wrap over that spot with the thread because now comes the wing. And wing material is slippery. So we're going to put white bucktail in first, as you see on the fly. And as I understand it, the top uh, of the, the black here was originally skunk. Uh, makes sense, uh, knowing who tied this fly, Earl Madsen, but uh, uh, I'm going to use black bucktail because I don't have any skunk. And I don't know, maybe the odor had something to do with it. You never know. So we're going to cut out a pinch of uh, white goes in first. We're not going to stack this. We don't want to stack it. We're going to come back till the first of the hair fiber tips just extend just a touch beyond the bend of the back hook. Right there. Same old story. Around it twice loose. Pull this is not going to flare because there's nothing here to flare. So that's laid on there. That's, that's perfect. We're going to lift this. We're going to cut this on a taper. Now I'm going to secure this pretty well. And I'm going to take a wrap under because I want to lift this wing just a little bit. 
just right there is where I want that to be. Before we go any further, because I'm going to tie in now the next section, which is the black bucktail, but this gets slippery up here. So we're going to add just a little bit of flexible, penetrating, clear cement before we add in our top section, which is the black bucktail. Snip out a chunk of that. Looks about right. We're going to clean the anything out from the the batch so that we're not tying any excess hair in. We're going to match that to that one. That looks just about right, don't you think? I think that's good. And twice. What happens when you go around twice and pull straight down, the material doesn't roll around the hook. It just locks it right on the top. And then once you get a few wraps on it, particularly with bucktail, you can take a look. Is it sitting right? Do I need to move it over a little bit? I'm going to move it over a little bit. So now I like that a lot. So a couple more firm wraps. I'm going to trim this on a, on a taper so that I can build the head of this fly. This is a big head on this fly and there's a reason for that. So we're just going to build, see we've got to build this dam up in front of that cutoff point. Mr. Madsen always put an eye on this fly of gray paint, if you can imagine. I don't have any gray paint. And the sample that I got from Jerry Reagan, Jerry, you know, Jerry was uh, fortunate enough to be around at that moment in time. Eh, I don't know whether he was or not, but you know, it. They had a uh, they had a gray eye. So anyway, went up and build that head. I mean, that's an old fashioned looking streamer head if you ever saw it. Uh, they were big heads. Some guys would paint eyes on them. Some wouldn't. This pattern calls for it. We're gonna whip finish this. Four or five wraps, and then since this calls for a painted eye. We're going to want to put head cement on here and then that's going to get set aside and we can come back later and put a gray eye on it if we wanted to do that. So I'm just going to coat that entire head with this penetrating head cement gives me an opportunity also to look and see and make sure that I've dotted all the eyes here on this no play on words and that's a uh, a buzzsaw very cool fly for the day <laughs>